Hey everybody, how's it going? Today, it's my pleasure to bring you an in-depth look at the beautiful 2002 Ford Thunderbird. And this is going to be a detailed, in-depth review of the Thunderbird. We'll start it up, show the engine, get an exhaust clip and go over the performance data, take it on a brief test drive, and show you a bunch of the unique aspects of the interior as well as exterior. And so, without further ado, Let's go ahead and start her up, let her run. The exterior color is a light metallic turquoise known as Thunderbird Blue. With an all black leather interior and matching Thunderbird Blue leather accents, a part of an optional color accent package. Automatic tilt, telescope and steering wheel. Beautiful sound. Now this instrumentation cluster was only seen for the 2002 model year Thunderbird, whereas in 2003 they came out with a separate pod style fashion. Turquoise needles with a little bit of brushed aluminum accenting and a retro font, all accented by a white face. Very traditional. And as far as the steering, power rack and pinion with a delightfully tight feel to it, definitely gives it a little bit more of a sporty feel, with a color accent band up top here with the matching Thunderbird blue. Unique badging coming across the airbag center, and your multifunction controls will go over that later in the video. As far as the gearbox, standard and only transmission available was a 5 speed automatic with low gear selection. In 2003 to 2005, they also added a manual shiftability function where, if you, where see if you clicked it over and just tipped it up and down, you can manually select through the gears. And before we begin, I'll show you how to remove the hard top. Located at the top of the A-pillars, you'll see a little hole. That hole houses a little nut that's then unscrewed by this little mechanism here. It just fits up in, so all I have to do basically is just loosen the nuts up in there. They won't fall out or anything, they'll just stay stationary until you put the top back on. Once you're done loosening the nuts up front, go back behind the parcel shelf here and there's two little levers. Push them back towards the rear of the vehicle to unlock the rear portion. Now I highly recommend this be a two person job because the top itself weighs about 80 pounds or so. It's just, it's almost impossible to lift it up yourself and try to drag it across the car without messing it up. It actually has to be lifted up and carried off and I'll have my fiance help in just a second. Ford also recommends this in their brochure. Down below, Thunderbirds that come with a hard top also come with this little aluminum dolly so you can prop the top up, strap it in and wheel it around for um, ease of um, maneuverability and storage. Then after it's on the dolly, you just strap it in place as such. Now this is the convertible top cover that you put over the rear to give a nice clean look to the back. This is actually the first time taking it out of the plastic wrap since the car was brand new. We bought the car with um, 39,000 miles on it a couple months ago. Snap in all the clips in up front and tuck in the little lip in the back to keep it planted down. And there you go.
And so we're gonna flip on the automatic headlamps, fog lamps, as well as the hazards. Driver's side window is automatic down. And we're gonna check out the exterior, shall we? Few automotive icons have done so much over the years to impact the very foundation, ideals, and images that people associate with owning a car. 1950s America was an exciting time of prosperity, optimism, and bold automotive design. That confidence and passion led to some of the most iconic automobiles over the next 20 years. One of the most famous, the Ford Thunderbird was one of the earliest examples of the personal luxury car concept. Built in response to the Chevrolet Corvette and influx of import roadsters and touring cars, the Thunderbird represented everything 1950s America was all about. Style, power, and innovation. First making its appearance at the Detroit Auto Show in 1954, the 1955 Thunderbird would become that automotive icon and nameplate that would carry itself through 1997. While the first generation Thunderbirds were the most iconic, they, just as the rest of the Ford lineup over the upcoming decades, would mold with the current tastes of America, whether it be for practicality, size, or power. Somewhere along the path, the Thunderbird lost its zing, that special something that gave it the twinkle of excitement as the original did. The cars grew and grew to their massive land yacht proportions in the 1970s before downsizing began in the early 80s. While styling did improve relative to 1980s and 90s styling, the Thunderbird was nothing more than a large four-person two-door car. While cool in its own right, that signature flavor had disappeared along with the nameplate in 1997 as the majority of America's taste for large coupes fizzed away. It wasn't until the forthcoming years that Ford announced an all-new two-seat Thunderbird, the first two-seat roadster since 1957. Like the original, this Thunderbird would not be classified as a sports car, but a car that balanced reasonable performance and touring comfort, often described as relaxed sportiness. Debuting at the 1999 Detroit Auto Show, 45 years after the original, the 11th gen car emulated everything that made the first gen T-Bird an icon. While the new car was never described as retro redo in advertising, it represented a modern reinterpretation and celebration of an optimistic time in America's history a time thought to mimic present-day America at the turn of the 21st century. Just like the original, the new Thunderbird featured the signature reverse wedge body styling, meaning a higher body stance in front than the rear, creating a leaned-back, relaxed look. It also features a wraparound windshield, large chrome A-pillar, and sharp-angled 67-degree header for an even sleeker look than the original. Portholes in the optional removable hardtop were also added in 1956 for better visibility but actually ended up being a styling icon and are also found on the newest gen. Other throwback elements include the faux fender vents, fringed afterburner tail lamps, round headlamps, chrome egg crate grille, hood scoop, and the Thunderbird scripts across the rear quarters. The original 1955 T-Bird's chassis was originally derived from the Ford Fairlane, albeit heavily modified. The new T-Bird's chassis is shared with both the Lincoln LS and Jaguar S-Type, also heavily modified with a 7.3-inch shorter wheelbase than the LS and 5 inches shorter in overall length than the S-Type. As far as the construction, it's a majority steel-made car, with aluminum thrown in there here and there, as well as lightweight sheet-molded composite paneling covering the trunk deck lid as well as the hood and giving some of the unique shapes to the Thunderbird. In fact, it's actually 11 inches longer than the original 1955. Of course, with this came advanced construction such as aluminum suspension components, isolated subframes, disc brakes with multi-piston calipers, and electronic brake force distribution. To combat the loss in torsional rigidity by creating a convertible, a number of measures were put into place to reinforce the chassis, three large braces in the body, an X brace under the engine, and middle of the car with a lateral brace behind the passenger compartment. This effectively doubled the chassis stiffness. Of course, torsional rigidity also improved when the hardtop was in place. While all these measures did help for composure, it also added weight, making the T-Bird just a couple hundred pounds shy of two tons. But hinting to the car's original nature, it too was designed for a more relaxed, laid-back cruising than hardcore performance. Therefore, it features softer springs, 24% softer front coils than the Lincoln LS, and 8% softer in the rear. More compliant, large-diameter twin-2 low-pressure gas shocks finish up the extra measures. Long rates of spring travel also really help soak up the road imperfections like a traditional large American car should. These measures kept the ride compliant without it being bouncy. The Thunderbird Deluxe came standard with 17 by 7.5 inch painted cast aluminum wheels, but these chrome clad 7 spoke examples came with the optional premium package. 
They're wrapped in Michelin Pilot tires measuring 235.50 at each corner. Brakes consist of four-wheel ventilated discs measuring 11.8 by 1.2 inches up front with two piston calipers and 11.3 by 0.8 inches in the rear. With this setup, it brings the car to a stop from 60 miles an hour and an average of 123 feet. As far as the suspension, it's fully independent with unequal link control arms front and rear with coil springs, anti-roll bars, and rear tow control links. Overall length is 186.3 inches with a width of 72 inches and a height of 52.1 inches. Total curb weight, including the 90-pound hardtop, is 3,883 pounds. And we're going to pop the hood. The Thunderbird comes standard with a Jaguar designed all aluminum 3.9 liter deliver head can 32 valve V8 that was also found in the Lincoln LS, in addition to a more potent variant found in the Jaguar S type. Unique to the T Bird was a lower final drive ratio for better off the line acceleration and a more aggressive sound and exhaust. The 3.9 liter is the short stroke variant of the Jaguar 4 liter and puts out 252 horsepower at 6100 RPM and 267 pound feet of torque at 4300 RPM. This translates to 0 to 60 times of 6.9 seconds and quarter mile times of 15.2 seconds at 94 miles an hour. Top speed was governed at 138 miles an hour. Performance was enhanced for 2003 onward by the addition of variable valve timing and electronic throttle control, raising power to 280 horsepower and 286 pound feet of torque. 2003 also received the select shift manual mode for the 5 speed automatic. As far as fuel economy, with an 18 gallon tank running on premium fuel, expect a miles per gallon rating of 17 city and 23 on the highway. The interior of the Thunderbird is a unique mix of old and new in a retro futuristic design language. Build quality is good for the day with padded material covering the touch points, upper doors, and the majority of the dash. For an additional cost, you could also opt for this color accent interior package, around an $800 option that basically complements the exterior themes across the doors, lower portion of the dash, and the seats. The ridge pattern, as well as the polished aluminum trim across the doors and the dash, also emulate that 50 style, with all of your power accessories located on the door, locking trunk release located down below, as well as some storage. You can also notice this a lot more with the color accent package, but the way the doors are designed, with them open, it actually looks like bird wings. As far as the seating, the Thunderbird came standard with nice and comfortable and supportive, good quality leather bucket seats with a reasonable amount of lateral support up top and down below. You do have manual lumbar as well as manual recline, power sliding and power height adjustment. The rib pattern comes across the middle and are also perforated to keep the seats nice and ventilated on a hot day. They also have integral side airbags with the Thunderbird logo embossed on the back of the seat and unique retro style headrests. The rear of the Thunderbird is nothing more than just a little bit of a parcel shelf, also has a unique Thunderbird logo, and also houses your rear speakers. As we continue down, door entry guards also feature the unique Thunderbird script, carpeted floor mats, as well as standard traction control. Heated seats were also available from 2003 onward. Your lighting, interior lighting dimmer, as well as your power mirror switcher is located on the dash next to the steering column. Like I said, everything is also nicely padded as you go across the speedometer the length of the vehicle, subtle chrome touches, and a power tilt telescoping steering wheel with auto tilt function. So let's go ahead and see if she sounds. There is a rev limiter in park and neutral around 3,000 RPM.
time we're going to put the power soft top up. Just pop the little clips and release the catch from the back. Before putting the top up, locate the little button in the center stack and hit the one with the top closed. Very simple. Then to lock it, release this, pull it down, make sure the hooks catch, and then lock it in place. And to just show it going down one more time, click, release, then hit down. Very quick. I'm going to shut her up. Get a quick acceleration pass. A nice burly note. Now the Thunderbird comes standard with a 6 speaker audio system, but through an AM FM radio with N-6 CD changer. 
and definitely packs a punch with great sound quality, especially for 2002. as well as a manually dimming rear view mirror and reading lamps located right down below. Now as far as the radio, it's really quite simple to use. Your typical Ford system of 2002 and also found in the Lincoln LS. Your in-dash CD player is located up top with your load and eject buttons, muting for your telephone, digital sound processor which is your preset equalizers, Rewind and fast forward to seek, changing your disc and tuning the radio, shuffle and scan. Off to the left of the display here, you have your bass and treble, your selection knob, as well as balance and fade. Changing radio modes, AM, FM, as well as CD, and your preset stations, not to mention your radio settings. Down below the radio is your standard dual zone electronic automatic climate control with your various zones down below front and rear defrost, temperature on either side, fan speed, and one-touch automatic. Your exterior temperature, as well as change between Fahrenheit and Celsius. And all the way at the bottom is your lighter and or power outlet with an extra 12 volt to the far right. Turning your airbag off, as well as the power top controls. In 2003 and later, you can also get a heated seat so that would be located right there. Continuing across the center console, Small speakers located on either side, padded emergency brake and two chrome accented cup holders, as well as a padded leather armrest with a modest amount of storage. As far as the steering wheel itself, you have your cruise control located down below here, as well as your radio, mute in the phone, as well as change between the different media modes located down below there. Your intermittent wipers, high beams, and turn signals are located in this stock. As far as the gauges, like we saw earlier, the retro theme continues with white face gauges and turquoise needle accents. While overall reminiscent to the Lincoln LS, it's nicely executed and tailored specifically to the Thunderbird, definitely making it unique. So we're gonna shut her down. We'll check out the rest of the vehicle, shall we? Pop the composite trunk, and you'll find a very modest amount of cargo space, just enough for carrying a few items. It's around 7 cubic feet. Your spare tires, temporary tires, located down beneath the cargo well. We also have all of the original paperwork for it, which is definitely pretty neat, including the original window sticker. Back there is actually a cover for the um, hard top when you actually put it on the dolly like I showed you earlier.
the passenger seat is manual recline with power sliding but lacks the height adjustment of the driver's seat. Good sized glove box. And all the padding from the dash also carries on to the lower portion here. The Ford Thunderbird is a recognizable classic in American automotive history. The personal luxury car that blends a V8, rear wheel drive, and automatic transmission. The perfect combination for cruising on a warm, sunny day. Well everyone, I hope you enjoyed this detailed look at the 2002 Ford Thunderbird. Be sure to stay tuned next time, there's a lot more where that came from. Take care everybody.